Hello everyone, today we have new video review and as you can see this time we are going to talk about fresh release from ICM. This time it comes in 130 second scale and this is quite unusual choice of the subject because it copies AH1G Cobra, early production but obviously we will see more versions in the future. And this is a US attack helicopter in a large scale, it was announced in the beginning of this year and it was interesting to see what will be actually copied in this kit. So so this is a completely new tooled release and we have a commercial sample here so it means you will get exactly the same stuff as what you'll see in this video review and we are going to open it together and check what is actually supplied in this nice and large I would say surprisingly large box. So first of all box art is quite nice here you can see comparison with my hand it is quite big box. Next on the side we have some information about the kit and if you give me a second I will check what is written there. So length will be 422 millimeters and there are 226 parts inside which is I would say somewhat reasonable for 130 second scale set. Here on the opposite side you will find four marking options which are included into this kit. We will talk about them a bit later when we will be checking the assembly manual. Now I'm going to open this box and because this is a let's say new ICM release it is sealed with a tape so I'm going to cut it with a sharp knife. I will do it off the camera just to be safe that I won't cut my fingers as well. In the meantime I would like to remind you that you can support us with a small donation. It's quite easy thing to do. Just click the support DSV button on our website and you will be the one who will choose how much you will donate us. But all this money will be used in order to get new photo and video equipment or maybe some interesting kit to be reviewed in our video or article review. Now I'm going to try to open this box. It's a bit of a tight fitment. I think you can hear it in the microphone. So just give me a moment to take out this box because it will be nearly impossible to do it with extended hands and we will check everything closer. As I said in the previous review some others just tear apart this cover printed sleeve when it's so tight and I can understand this because as you can see I'm spending really a lot of time just to take it out take it up of the box. So here it is, it is flexible, it does not provide any protection. This white box actually protects all the parts and you can open it like this. Okay, so here we have all the sprues and there is surprisingly a lot of free space. I'm not sure why it was done like this and still all frames are packed into the same plastic bags. So that's also quite strange thing. So let's move it aside. Oops, I touched the microphone with box, but now everything should be okay. So once again, everything is packed into the same plastic bag. Just give me a second to open it and we will take a closer look together. Okay. So we are going to start with the first gray plastic sprue which is quite interesting because here we have mix of various parts. I will place it like this, let's center it, maybe zoom in a bit more so that you can see these parts closer. So what do we have here is, well we have some tail section parts, these are obviously parts for the tail fin and I'm not sure why we are given two pairs so I guess one of them will be used for the different version we also have some parts for the engine compartment we have the tail propeller and also I guess these are blades for the main propeller they are quite large but you will see them in a second when we zoom in as much as we can so that you can check these parts closer so overall molding quality seems to be fine I do not see any issue here but these parts are seriously large and it will be interesting to see how they will be fixed in place because I think it will be a bit tricky to hold them uh, together as a propeller, main propeller. Next we continue with the tail propeller. Here you can see by the way details on the tail section. As you can see we have raised rivets which is as far as I remember it is up to the 
Rio subject, so that's why it is OK here. And next we continue with another pair of tail parts. So that's why I'm a bit confused why it is here, because um, maybe it is designated for the next version which will be released in the separate box and so it's just supplied here as a nice bonus and inside we have guiding elements which will help you with the proper alignment of these parts together and by the way what you can see is that blades they should be glued out of two parts because we have guiding elements here and here so basically you have to combine them together and it makes even more interesting situation because you will have to deal with really heavy parts on top of your helicopter and let's not forget that this is a 130 second scale kit next we continue with two identical plastic frames so just give me a second to take one of them and we will take a closer look together here we have various minor parts for armament and maybe also for the canopy part so let's just zoom in straight into this frame and check everything closer so again this is a 130 second scale set but you can see that some parts are really tiny so be ready to work with such stuff it will be a bit tricky maybe it will even require some tweezers to be used next we continue with landing gear wheels here i can say that they are okay for out of the box build but if you would like to have more features is definitely a good option to find some resin wheels and I'm quite sure that we will see such upgrades in the future I guess aftermarket manufacturers will be happy to produce something like that next we continue with missile launchers and also some parts for the main propeller and that will be our main rotor if you prefer that will be a really interesting thing to assemble next we have again missile launchers and some parts for the cockpit if I flip it over, inside we get some guiding elements, so it will be easy, well, relatively easy to align these parts together and I don't think you will encounter any major issues here. And note, by the way, how the landing gear wheels are designed, so we have one part of the tire mode separately, while rim is pre-molded as a single piece part on one of the halves so basically you can paint this part of the tire separately and get a bit more accurate paint finish so it's also a credible i would say design which will be helpful in assembly next we continue with a larger plastic sprue just give me a second to take it out and here I can see that we have already some fuselage parts, we also have skis here and also we continue with some parts for the cockpit. So let's zoom in again so that we can check all this stuff closer and here you can take a closer look. So attachment points are really thin so I don't think you will have any issues. This is in my opinion it should be some special assembly jig which will help you with alignment but we will see in assembly manual. Next we continue with some parts I guess these ones are also for the rotor and next here you can see instrument panel. Obviously some aftermarket producers for example Edward they will release their own PE parts for this kit not immediately but if you are happy or ready to wait, it's better to wait because you will get even more details in cockpit area. Here we continue with landing gear skis. Here you can see another version and also some parts for the engine compartment. Everything looks cool. For example, here on the fuselage panel, you can see the rest rivets and also recessed panel lines. So it's just a matter of careful painting and weathering and you will be able to show these features on your model. Okay next what do we have next that's a clear sprue and here i can see that canopy parts are molded separately so that actually hints that we can copy the open canopy on your model and that's really cool but i wonder if masks are included because as you can see these are really large parts and you have to cover them somehow and it's better to have some masks or at least mask template because otherwise it will be really tricky to work with them next we have the final gray plastic sprue which is quite big in comparison with the clear sprue we saw several seconds ago so here you can see two fuselage halves and 
in my opinion, they look more or less fine. And we also have cockpit tab here. And what is also interesting is that we have these hatches separate. I guess they will, their choice will depend on the version you will be building. So pay attention to that element. And if we zoom in here, you can see that on cockpit tab, we have some pre-molded features. Again, if you plan to use aftermarket P, they will be completely replaced. So you can forget about them. Next, we have this rice tree that's on the tail section, just like on the real subject. Correct me if I'm wrong, but if I remember photos correctly, they were rised on the tail surface. Here we also have recessed panel lines and really nice air vents here. Next, you can see this nose section. Here we have some parts for the interior. And again, another fuselage half. And attachment points, by the way, note the attachment points, they are quite thin and I like that there are not that many of them. We also have guiding elements, for example, here. So these are guiding pins, which will be helpful in order to align such large parts together. And just to give you an idea of their size here is comparison with my hand, they're really big and you will have to track their alignment during assembly because otherwise you might end up with a really unpleasant surprise. Next we have decals sheet. So there is only one decals sheet inside. As usual it is hidden in the assembly manual. It is not hidden in this separate plastic bag. Here it is. Let's zoom in and maybe close the camera a bit so that it won't be that bright. And there is no mention where it is it was printed, but we have decals for the instrument panels. We do not have decals for the seat belts, even though I was expecting them in a such big kit. But at least we have stencils. And as I said, if you plan to use aftermarket, definitely you won't be worried about any seat belts or instrument panel decals because you will be replacing them with PE parts. Next, we continue with assembly manual. So this one is printed in form of large brochure maybe i'll close the camera a bit more so here we have a short history note on the first page also some technical specifications and paints chart next we continue with the parts map and you can see that there are plenty of parts which won't be used so pay attention to which version you'll be installing especially with this tail fins i uh, guess that's that was the right guess that they will be employed for a different version. Assembly process starts with pilot seats. So next you install them into the cockpit tab together with control sticks. And I think that's also a good kind of... This pair is a good candidate for some aftermarket PE upgrades, especially seat belts. Next we continue with instrument panels and also combing panels installed here and there. And you continue with an engine. So engine will be quite interesting thing to assemble because as you can see, so that wasn't an assembly jig. It is actually a part which will be installed in the middle. So I guess we assemble this small stand for the rotor and then we will be installing it in the middle of the fuselage. And note how the tail section is installed. It will be fixed with help of special alignment element and the same is done on the opposite side so that's already step number 21. Next we continue with the tail rotor it gets installed on one of the fuselage halves I'm not sure why it is installed on this step it would be better to have it oh so it is fixed from one side but I guess if you will be gluing it into the place even though here it's shown that it shouldn't be glued then you don't have to worry about installation of this part to fix it in the right spot and next we install these parts with say support for the um, propeller I guess that's also I wonder if all this stuff will be visible on the finished model because as you can see we assemble the uh, fuselage, we install various panels, we then we join fuselage halves together. What is next? Next we continue with more panels on the opposite side. And here by the way you can see this stuff which we just assembled. So it copies the engine, engine and main reductor 
And that's really interesting if it will be exposed on the finished model because as you remember this hatch is separate. And note also that no section should be glued out of two halves, so be careful while joining such large parts together. Also the belly panel is separate, so at least here you won't have any seams. And next we continue with more external panels attached here and there. And finally we start working on the machine gun turret on the nose section. As you can see there are two versions depending on the marking you choose, so again pay attention to that. And the same applies to this tail fin part. It will depend on the marking you choose for your helicopter. Here we have some cardboard, I'm not sure why it is inside. But next we continue with some parts for tail wings. Actually these are wings, as you can see, they will be our pylons, they are installed from both sides. And we have positioning lights, then we install some minor elements here and there, nothing interesting, so we can move on to the next page. Here we install skis, and we start working on the canopy, I guess. So, it will be quite interesting because I can see this band and you have to replicate it carefully and align it with the model. Next we also have these separate doors and as you can see you can assemble it in the open position from both sides, which is really cool in 130 second scale, this is a really important feature. Next we can also open this engine compartment hatch, which is also quite a surprising thing, especially for ICM because they are not into such stuff. And now finally we get all these, let's say, additional features out of the box, you don't have to spend extra money. Next we start assembling the main rotor and that's where the funny things start because you have to attach these two large blades together somehow and so that they hold in place. So maybe it's a good idea to use a melding or welding glue in order to have everything joined together uh, properly. Especially considering the fact that it will be sitting on this shaft. Next we continue with landing gear wheels which will be installed on the skis from both sides. And again it's an option, it will depend on your choice. And next we have... what is this? So I guess that's the special part for the towing, if you place the wheels on the skis. Next we have rocket launchers and bombs. And here you can see the loadout scheme, in case you would like to have a proper loading. And what is even more important is that we have the mask template here, so you will be able to get a nice paint finish, just cut masks according to these templates and you will be good to go. Next we continue with two marking options, that's actually, well, it's one marking option, so whole marking guide is dedicated to one helicopter and it's not written from which year as far as you can see. So we can move on to the next one. This one is also dark green. This one is more interesting because it comes in a camouflage and it's from 1967. And here we have one more from 1969. Also green version with a flag. You know which flag on the bottom. So all this stuff is already available. That's uh, let's say final version of this kit and it should be um, already available for purchase in Modelimex so if you would like to get it just hurry up and get it because I guess it will be sold out quickly and of course I will be happy to hear your opinion about such a release. Do not forget to write it here in the comment section below. If you like this video press the like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you in the next video review as usual. Thank you for joining me today and bye!